Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do a very quick uh, watercolour for you this afternoon. It's just going to be a farmhouse on the Romney Marsh. Actually a little bit out of season. It's just a picture that I loved uh, that was taken just after the corn was cut last year. But it was a quite exciting, quite a, a heavy sky. So I felt that it might make a nice little watercolour. So let's press on and let's see where we go. Okay, for this I'm using a very heavy 300 pound, uh, 640 GSM, very, very rough paper from Arches. Now I've had this paper for a long, long time and I've not seen um, it sort of any others as rough as this. So it is quite a textured surface. Now the uh, farmhouse is a very old one on the Romney Marsh. I don't know its age, but it's got a cat slide roof to the right multiple uh, angles and, and extra little bits of the building here and there. It's not exactly as the reference. It's not far short, but uh, it's not uh, exactly the same. There are a few other buildings to the left of it, which I am or will put in, and then some very sharp or some big bushes and shrubs in the contours of the fields uh, between us or me and the farm itself. Now some of those shrubs and bushes are of different types. They've got big red berries all over them. So they got a you can't actually see that, but you do see a red hue, and you'll see that described in the painting further on. Now the trees around the farm enclose and set the farmhouse uh, up. It's they're very dark, but the two on the left are quite green, whereas that large tall one is quite a cool color blue on the right hand side not quite sure what what it is but it's very distinctly different to the others there's a range of hills which are the downs in the background and a very distant little farmhouse i'm putting in now with a couple of trees and there are obviously another farm further on and i'm not going to put too much detail in about it just want to suggest that it's there and it gives me a great deal of aerial uh, perspective moving forward so i'm just rearranging checking a couple of things the long hedge that divides uh, that farm i'm assuming that that farm is accessed by a lane and that's probably what that hedgerow is now you can see how rough that paper is look how difficult it is for me to get that paint that paint or water to pet, uh, penetrate the surface so you've got this lovely uh, surface on the top which is the the paint is just um, sort of skating over the top really I had decided to put some white areas in but later decided to take those out because I realized that there's quite a a lovely warm color in the sky and I wanted to uh, do that I started off with a blue and indigo mix and come all the way down to the fields where I used uh, predominantly raw sienna now I'm reinforcing some of those indigos in the sky with a bit of blue and that pink that bit of magenta coming into the middle part of the sky and I'm gonna lift some of that out I'm trying to reinforce it but I will lift some out that was a bit too much i felt so what i'm going to do is go back in with a bit more of the mix and just lose that but i also lost a bit of the pinkness and i wanted to put that back in as well so you'll see me add some more of the magenta mix coming through here in a second or two just there and allow that to um, soften and give me some sort of cloud form now you'll see to the right hand side the reference photo will be here for the duration of this painting and I have painted mine quite differently to the to the photo I just felt that that range of lighter clouds set against the darker background just worked a little bit better for me so that's what I did and that's what I stuck with but I'm doing a bit more in the sky and a bit more blue and a bit more magenta coming in here and there just to vary the pigments within the sky itself it didn't want to be just one absolute overall color i wanted to vary it a little bit and i'm coming down through the hills as well it doesn't matter because all of that structure is going to be a lot darker now i put in a definite amount of cobalt into there but took a dampness to the paint at the bottom there so it lifted it away from the sky now you see that I've um, dried this painting and the amazing difference or transformation when you dry it, how that pigment suddenly goes so much lighter. And that's what I say to students that 
if you want something that you really want it to be dark when you finish you've got to put a lot more pigment in to start with and you can see how much it dries now my trees are a mix of indigo and lemon to the left and they give a fresher green but then i put in a little bit more blue to it to give me that and a bit of cobalt um a little bit of the um or oh, um turquoise cobalt turquoise i put into that tree just to give it that coolness and made it quite distinct from the others and you can see i put a little red flush of vermilion into these big shrubby bushes that run along a ditch line between in the middle of the field but i will take that out a little bit it's just a suggestion now i'm putting in the field uh, the hills at the background they're quite a cool color quite a bit of uh, indigo and and some um, other sort of blues and violets going into that it's very very light and it will dry up light but I wanted while it was damp to put one or two suggestive darks in there that look like trees or wooded areas on top of the hills and along coming down towards the bottom not too much I didn't want to overdo it I didn't want to draw the eye away from what will be the central structure which is that of the building and so the buildings had its first pass of color and i've let that dry and what i wanted to do is go back in and add some more details to the hills behind now i didn't want to overdo it i merely wanted to put a little bit more value into that a little darker so it will still dry back a lot lighter but it does give a little bit more interest and suggest more wooded more trees on top of the hills as they go through the background and that's what i wanted to convey and now to that end i just tested the trees were dry enough and i wanted to put in some different values of green uh, into the um, mixes of the trees now they're going to have a couple more passes but the the darker i make these the more it will throw out and isolate that building below them and that's really quite important because the trees behind it actually frame the farmhouse and i'm putting a much darker but a bluer look into that tree to the right hand side i wish i knew what it was but it really is distinctly different to the other ones and it is an extremely tall tree as well. As you can see, uh, it dominates the whole picture to the right in the photographic reference as well on the top uh, right hand side of the picture. Now that all done, I am just making another bit of a dark mix to go in and further emphasize this. And I will actually do more of that towards the end of this painting. It's not a very long process to do, but it is just looking at all those finer details and i really want to isolate but i also got to be very very careful that i don't destroy the look of the chimneys and the other parts of this building moving forward so it does take a bit of care and also if i wanted to soften those edges so a little bit of damp water uh, or <laughs> a little bit of dampness clean water should i say in the brush just to soften them against the lighter color now i'm putting some details into the farm very important i brought the camera in a little bit closer for you to see the detail and i'm adding sort of really dark shadows under the eaves down the sides of the chimneys windows all just little bits of definition to bring that building to life as it were and uh, give it three dimensions instead of just being a flat wash color and the cat sly roof i actually nearly missed that when i was drawing it i suddenly realized it was there and these beautiful roof colors now they are uh, i'm guessing because it's old it's an old kemp peg and they have these beautiful red colors and um, roofers colors really uh and just set it off and they make it look really really attractive so i wanted to put that in and i will come back in with some gouache on that um dormer window to the right hand side but i just wanted to finish off this bit of building before we carry on now i'm doing the hedge row and i guess that hedge is uh, marking the edge of the lane that feeds the farm itself and as you can see now i'm going with a much darker green mix on these trees and just a really last sort of ditch attempt to throw that building out as it were and give it the presence that i wanted it to have and i went in a bit more dark on the other tree as well i thought for good measure now i'm using an indigo and oriolin to suggest the 
darks around these bushes in the middle of the field they they sort of i think there's a ditch running through there one of the many ditches on the romney marshes and they grow out and they got full of berries this time of year and um yeah, I just wanted to get rid of some of the red overall and just suggest the darkness. And I went in with a much darker uh, reddish green to give the emphasis to the shadow and make them come forward because obviously they're between me and the farmhouse and of course the hills beyond. So it's obvious about the aerial perspective. Likewise, I'm also doing the same for the buildings in the background, the trees around the farm in the very distant area and they're cooler but they still look like trees and they still work and i left a little bit around that bush to give a sense of sunlight um in the whole thing so now i'm cleaning up and i wanted to make a little bit of indian red and raw sienna just a dry brush mix across the forward field and a little bit more uh, sienna in to give a difference for the middle field and that's really it i just wanted to do that a little bit of dark into the windows uh, that had gone a little bit faded on the building and i'm now going to go in with some um, gouache just to finish off uh, with a rigger just to tip a little bit in on that dormer which i promised also other little areas of highlights nothing much and you know it's it it's it we're pretty much there there's not much left to do and i've enjoyed painting this picture for you and we're done it's finished okay there wasn't much to it and it's taken longer than i thought but hopefully you've enjoyed this painting and um it's just a simple little landscape i hope <laughs> and uh, the Romney Marsh, yet again, is my home turf. But hopefully you've got something from this moving forward and to help you with your own work. And um, have a go. Try this out. The reference for it will be free to download on my Patreon site. So as long as you're learning from it and not using it in any commercial way at all, uh, you're welcome to use that reference to uh, have a go yourself. And... Put any comments regarding this on the comment section below. More than welcome, and I'll answer each and every one. And if you do want to help uh, support my channel, all these films that I do take an awful lot of time. They take over 80% of my working week just to film, edit, and put stuff together to put out there on Patreon and on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you do want to get involved and help me support that work, then please nip on over to the Patreon channel. It doesn't cost you anything to have a look at it, but there's so much more there to see, so much more to enjoy and get benefits from, and I'd love to have you on board. Well, of course I'm going to say that because it will help me out, but please, please, please take a look at it, and if it's something that you would like to get involved with, you'll be so, so welcome. So with all that said and done, I'm going to look forward to catching you next Friday, and we'll have another video out very, very soon. So... Yeah. Happy painting, everyone. Keep up the good work. Catch you all very soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye.